I want to preach today, I want, I want to minister today on a subject called Break the Box. Everybody say, Break the Box. <clears throat> Church, it is time. Now, I want you to listen to me. If Joel chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2 is correct, and I believe it is. They say in the last days, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, listen, you, we talk about God all the time. We talk about Jesus all the time. But the Holy Spirit has an assignment. And so today what I want to do, I want to lead us, guide us, give us scripture on how in the world do we break the box. How in the world do we break the box? It is time for Elkhorn, I'm your pastor so I can talk to you. It is time, I do not want a vicious cycle that 20 years from now we look back and we're still a 2020 church. I want Elkhorn to be a church that's on the cutting edge. I want Elkhorn to be a water walking, tongue talking, flame throwing. Come on, somebody. Touch the anointing. I'm telling you, listen, I want you to be able to lay your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Now, listen, we say amen, but listen, there's a lot of people in here today, right now, you're in a box. You're in a box. So today, I want everybody to say it one more time, break the box. Everybody say it again, I like it, break the box, hallelujah, yeah. I really believe the enemy wants all of us, including me, listen, he don't mind me being a preacher, just don't be anointed. Just give three points, it's okay, and if you're a good church, if you're like a, I'm talking, here's what they call a soul winning church now, if you've got three baptisms or salvations a year, you're called a, you're, you're above you're above. I will never settle for one, two, three, or 3,000, or 6,000. I'm telling you, we serve a God that will go north, east, south, and west. He will take you just as you are, and he refuses to leave you like you are. I'm talking to somebody today. The enemy wants to put you in a box. The enemy does not mind you being here today. The enemy just says, stay in the box. Put the church in the box. Put your worship in a box. See, we think we're something because we raise our hands. We think we're something because we got a praise band. That don't make Elkhorn. The Holy Ghost makes Elkhorn. The Holy Spirit drives Elkhorn. Not the pastor, not the leadership. I'm going to set the stage today because sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget, and if we're not careful... Your worship will be in the box. The preaching will be in the box. You can come to church, but long as you stay in the box. Not only does the enemy want to put you in a little box, he wants to put a lid on it. He wants to put, he wants to put you in a box. I'm preaching to myself. If y'all don't like it, I'll preach myself happy today. He said, he said I'm going to put you in a box, and I'm going to put a lid on your life. And long, that's where you're going to be. You can come to church, but stay in the box. Stay in the box. You can worship God. You can even try to raise your but stay in the box. I truly feel in my spirit that this morning, that's exactly where some of you feel. And if you'll be honest, like I'm going to be honest, there's sometimes I feel like my worship's in a box. There are sometimes I feel like my preaching's up in a box. There's sometimes I feel like my marriage. Come on, somebody, help me. Now, if you've been married a month or two or six months, I'm not talking to you right now. You should be hot, steaming, rocking. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me get back in the lane. Hallelujah. But how many of y'all can be honest? Sometimes you feel like you're in a box. There's five of them. How about the rest of them? How many of you feel sometimes you just feel I'm alive, I love God, but I'm just in a box? Not only in a box, I feel like the, I feel like the enemy has a lid on my life. I, I, I'm praying, but it feels like my prayers are just hitting the ceiling and coming back down. I'm preaching to somebody. See, the enemy tells some of us, he puts you in a box, he says, that's as far as you'll ever get. That's as successful as Elkhorn will ever get. That's as good as you'll ever get. And I'm telling you, if we're not careful, we can have 950 seats. But here's what I'm telling you, unless the Holy Ghost shows up, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. And see, we know that here, but here's some of you. I can read your mail, as long as we don't start acting stupid. Oh, come on, y'all. Let's have some church in here today. Yeah. See, I'm preaching to somebody. The enemy loves to put us in a box. 
And here's the point I'm trying to make. Listen to me very carefully. Why is the Southern Baptist Church only seeing two salvations? That's on average out of 48,000. Out of 48,000 Southern Baptist churches, only 10,000 seen two thousand. I mean, seen two salvations or, or three salvations. 38,000 Southern Baptist churches are in a box. I don't care. I'm going to preach it. They're in a box. Because God says we'll do greater things than what Jesus did when he walked upon the earth. How many of y'all can testify that I'm not in a box today? Come on, somebody. I'm not in a box. I'm not going to let my worship be in a box. I'm not going to let my church be in a box. I refuse to allow the enemy to put a lid on my life. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to be an old average stinking preacher. I don't want to be an average church. And I'm telling you, listen, here's what the Lord's for. If you stay in the box, listen, if you stay in the box long enough, that box will become your coffin. If you stay in the box, I'm going to, listen, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm so glad y'all are here. I hope y'all come back next week. Here's what the enemy says. If you stay there long enough, your dreams will die. Your dreams are going to die. If you stay in a box, he said, I'm trying, I'm telling you, right now the enemy is trying to shut the church's doors. Y'all can say what you want to say. He's trying to shut the church's doors. And if we sit back and be in a box, if you just sit back and say, oh, whatever, it's going, whatever's going to happen. I'm telling you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, where one or two or three come together touching and agreeing, God will be in the midst. We can change the atmosphere. We can change this world. You can change your I'm preaching better. Hallelujah. Get out of the box. Get out of the box in Jesus' name. Some of you know God, but you got a lid on your life. Woo. Feel the Holy Ghost. Ooh, I, feel, I don't know what y'all feel. It feels good up here. Mm. Let me get back to this. Hallelujah. You can see, listen to me. Can, can I teach this for a moment? In the Old Testament, let's say Old Testament. Jesus, God, was in a box. It was called the Ark of the Covenant. The presence of God, y'all check me out. The presence of God stayed in a box. And when they wanted to get to God, they had to go to church. Yeah, I don't believe in church. Well, you don't believe the Bible. And all of a sudden, they said, if you really want to get into the presence of God, if you want to find God, you've got to go through something called the veil. That separates you from whatever's going on the outside. And then when they got in there, God was in the Ark of the Covenant. Wherever the ark went, there was victory. I feel the Holy Ghost. If they, if they left the ark at home, if they left the ark on the side of the street, they were defeated. But that's how powerful God was and is. You take me with you, there is no such thing as war. New Testament. How many of y'all think about New Testament? Because here's the Old Testament God was in a box, Ark of the Covenant. New Testament, he stepped out of the box, on the cross, and inside of us. Where I go, he goes. Where he goes, I go. He's a good God. He's no longer in the box, hallelujah. He's Jesus. Brian, settle down. No, y'all get up. Settle, settle up, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful I serve a, a God that is no longer in, in the box. No wonder he said, you can do greater things. You can do, listen to me, Elkhorn. You can do greater things. We will do greater things. We will do greater things. Jesus, I'm going to mess some people up. Can I mess you up just really quick? Jesus, now that he's out of the box, he's everywhere. He's at your workplace. Oh, can I really mess some people up? He's at the crack house. Wow. Watch this. You ready? You ready? <laughs> it's so good. It's, he's at the jailhouse. I've seen more happen in jailhouses than I have the church house. You know why? Because you can't stop Jesus. You can't stop God. He's out of the box and he's alive. I need somebody to give him praise here today. 
Yeah, he's alive. He's, he's alive. And whether you sit there, I don't believe, watch this. I'm just telling you, today, if you'll listen to this word, you'll get set free. You'll get set free. <laughs> yeah. He's up in messed up marriages. He's in this messed up preacher. Y'all see, y'all said amen about that. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to preach is listen, Jesus wants to get out of the box. He's out of the box and into your heart, into your life. The reason why some of you right now are struggling, because you have God in a box. You have God in a box. And listen, 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 listen y'all with me, Sam, I'm with you. Here, let, me, let me tell you some things that, that they put in the box. Here's some things that they have put in the box. Ooh, y'all feel the Holy Ghost? Y'all feel Jesus? They have put healing in the box. Yeah, they have. There are churches that are having conventions that the healing no longer exists. Uh, I'm hitting something today. Jesus. Oh, he was just a man. He was just a man. Box. Oh, here's a good one. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you, listen, you've got a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled pastor and that has been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, and I'm not going to back down out of it. Hallelujah. There is a gift. I'm a gift. There's a gift. It's alive. It's alive. And here's, if you're this big and if you're that bad, why don't you take 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14, Ephesians 6, all through the Bible, and just rip it out and tear it out and throw it. It doesn't work no more. You know what you do? Because you got him in a box. God. Holy Spirit. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Church, speaking in tongues and prophecy. All of them's in a box. And some of you say, well, Brian, I believe in them. Well, when was the last time you've experienced it? You see, if there's a lid on your life, it's got you covered. I'm going somewhere. Everybody say, he's going somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm going somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me go ahead and really mess y'all up. I'm gonna, if I've not made you mad yet, let me hang on just a second. Hang on just a second. Now, I love y'all, but I am tired of saying we're the church of Jesus Christ and we're worse off than the world is. There's more fighting in the church than there is the world. So today I serve the devil notice. I come by a Simon made straight from the throne room of God. And I'm telling you in Jesus Christ's name, listen to me, turn to your neighbor one more time, say you're at the right place at the right time. And go ahead and say this, I know you don't feel it right now, <laughs> but hang on because it's coming. Ah, hallelujah, watch this, watch this. We, we, we can't put, God don't fit in a box. So y'all hang on. Lean in because it's preaching time. I couldn't wait to get to this. God's not a Republican. Now, I know that shocks some of you. But you can't put God in a Republican box. God is not a Democrat. And listen, if y'all want some heat, I'm anointed now, so come on up here and get you some of this. I'm just telling you, you touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. God is not a Republican. God is not a Democrat. I wish I had somebody to help me preach it. You can't put him in a Republican, Democrat, Independent. You can't put him in that box. Oh, let me go a little bit farther. He's not from Kentucky. God's not from Kentucky. Well, there went the UK fans. <laughs> I thought he's. I've had, listen, this is the truth, Joey. I had someone literally come to me and say, I thought God's favorite color was blue. He made the colors. He made the colors. My God. See, we want God to be like us. Oh, that's a good word. See, we want to put God in his infinite power in our little box. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I ain't even got nothing yet, y'all. Y'all hang on. I'm telling you. Hang on. He's not from Kentucky. Watch this. God's not an American. Brian, what is he? He is a Jew. He loves Mexicans. He loves Asians. He loves white. He loves black. He loves, watch this. If you are born again and know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you don't see color. 
Y'all go on. I'm going to your bad self this morning. I'm preaching better than y'all acting this morning. He's God all by himself. Brian, you act like a fool. I would rather act like a fool for Jesus than be a fool in this world. Well, I need somebody to give God praise in here today. We're going somewhere. God loves people in Nigeria the same way he loves the people in America. <laughs> what I'm trying to preach is you cannot put God in a box. We want God to be just like us. We want God to be just like us. We even read his word and try to say, well, this is what I believe. Who cares? Who cares? I told y'all. Oh, let, let me go ahead. Here we go. <laughs> God is not Baptist. Now, if you're mad, you're a Baptist. Let me go farther. God is not a Methodist. Now, y'all amen about that. What about that Baptist? Go back to the Baptist. Hey, I told them Methodists. He is not a charismatic Pentecostal person. Ooh, boy, y'all start praying, blood hedge. Tell me right, blood hedge. Yeah. God is God all by himself. You cannot put him in a human box. And I just need somebody to believe that with me. If we want to thank you, had a kid, nobody else said it but a child. That's why the Bible says, hinder not my children. Because a kid, they ain't lost, yes, they ain't got political yet. They ain't got religious yet. They believe they can walk on water, hallelujah. Huh. I'm at a water walking church this morning. I feel it. But if we're not careful, you'll try to put your God back in a box. And all of a sudden, you'll say, well, Brian, I, I'm, I'm free. I, I can still praise him. Yeah, hi. Hi. Yeah, I can still praise him, Brian. They've not stopped my praise. You've got a half an arm sticking out of a box. God just spoke to me. That's about the way America's running right now. They're half sold out. Lukewarm. I wish you'd either be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. Don't be giving me a half praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Because you'll make me sick. You want to make God vomit? Give him a half praise. You want to make God vomit? Be a half sold out Christian. You want to make God vomit? You'd be more of a Republican or a Democrat or an independent than you are a child of God. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Boy, it's tight in here. That's all right. That's all right. Listen, here's what, I, here's what I'm just saying. I think God is tired of man-made theology. And I'm a professor. I teach. But God is wrecking me. God is shifting me. I'm telling you, I'm believing. If y'all will believe with me, it's going to get dangerous. You let God out of that box. You take the lid off. And you let God be God all by himself. And you just be his follower. You follow where God goes, and he'll never mislead you. That's a good word for somebody here today. You follow him. You follow him. You follow him. And while I'm on this, y'all ready? Somebody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. You know why some of you don't tithe? Boy, there went the whole, there we go. Boy, the Spirit just left the room. Yeah, you know why some of you don't tithe? Oh, you ready? Here it goes. Here it is. Because I'm telling you, it don't fit your box. Oh, God, you told me to preach this. Yeah. What you're telling God is, I'm my own provider. Oh. Whoa. I hit a vein there, didn't I? You know, the reason why some of you don't tithe is because you tell God, God, I'm good on my own. I can take care of my own finances. I'm my own provider. And you're tithing that little method at 10%. It don't fit my box. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Because listen, here's what I know. I tell the people this all the time. Either you will love Elkhorn or you'll hate Elkhorn because Elkhorn tells truth. And the truth will set you free. It'll get you out of the box. It'll take the lid off. And then you can start praising God with all that you are. If you'll listen. If you'll take heed. If you'll take heed. So here we, here we go. I want to I I do one more thing, and I'm out of here. You say, Brian, really? Yeah, that's, I, that's it. Believe me, that's all I can do right now. You know what the real problem is? And I want to thank Kathy Janes and her family. And I robbed her little grandson's uh, little toy. And I want to preface this before I preach this. This point, Jensen Franklin made this point. So listen, I'll give credit where credit's due. But it was so good, I think it was worth preaching again. I had one professor, W.A. Criswell, Dr. Criswell said these words. If a sermon's worth preaching, it's worth somebody else preaching twice. But it's got to be anointed. It's got to be anointed. Y'all, you know what the real problem is? We treat Jesus like a jack-in-the-box. We treat Jesus like a jack-in-the-box. Y'all, y'all ain't getting this, are you? Yeah. I know we all go through hard times. I know you're at church today, but some of you is waiting for the drums. Some of you is waiting for the bass. Some of you, we're just sitting there going, well, I can't praise him unless I got the whole band, the whole band. Boy, I hope Brother Brian's hot today. I need a word from God. And you'll come in and... Uh Uh-oh, I feel something. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost is coming. Oh, Jesus! Oh! And then the next thing you know, y'all know I'm, too, I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Sorry. We treat Jesus like a jack in the box. Yeah. We treat him. All of a sudden, we'll feel the Holy Ghost in here. You'll get excited. The praise team will turn it up. The preaching will go out. And all of a sudden, here's what we do we leave this thing where something just happens. We put Jesus back in a box. We put him right back in the box. We put him right back in the box. And all of a sudden, we think that, oh, here here it comes. Pop goes Jesus. That's exactly how we treat Jesus. I'll call on you when I need you. I'll call on you when I need you. I'll call on you, but until, and here, I'm going to go ahead and say this too. All them gifts and stuff, now they, that's just stupid. I ain't, I ain't acting like that. Lord, I know you have wrote five chapters on gifts and callings, but Lord, today, not in my church. Not in my church. I've heard pastors say this. Not in my church. Y'all ready? Y'all, everybody lean in. Lean in. Everybody, yeah, come on, y'all lean in. It's not your church. It's not your church. It's not the back rows church. It's not the front rows church. It's the Holy Ghost church. It's God's church. It's Jesus' church. And I highly advise us to let God out of the box. Let Jesus out of the box. Let the Holy Ghost out of the box. Take the lid off and let God be God of it all. Somebody give him praise in here. Oh, come on. Hey, I'm not talking about a jack-in-the-box praise. Come on, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, I got to feel it, Brian. I got to I got to feel it. Oh, I got to feel I got a jack-in-the-box. That's how we praise sometimes. I'm looking at some praises in the good times, the bad times, the hard times. I'm praising him no matter what. That's what I'm talking about. It should never take a pastor. It should never take a pastor to make you stand on your knees. and Stand on your knees. Stand on your feet. I'm human. Did the pastor really say that? Yep, go ahead. I said, listen, it should never take a pastor. It should never take a praise team for make you stand on your feet and to raise your hands and open your mouth and give the greatest name ever created, the name of Jesus Christ praise. Some of you should have been dead a long time ago. Some of you should have been up in a ditch. Some of you should have a tombstone over your... 
But, but God, hallelujah, he come out of the box. He come out of it. He's in me today. And that's why I stand. That's why I sing. That's why I preach. Woo. Hallelujah. I know we got hard times. I'm not making light of that. There's times I want to quit. There's times I'm like, God, I have nothing else to give. You notice there's a lot of eyes. Yeah, y'all, y'all know that a lot of eyes up in there. And church family, listen, Greg, you come back up here. I want y'all to listen to me. Facebook, I want you to listen to me. I am so happy. I am so happy. I am so thankful. And I appreciate you all being here today. I really am. I'm so thankful that the Facebook family is listening and watching. But God wants to go home with you today. Some of you, here's what, look at me. Here's how you treat him. Sunday, you're on fire, on fire. And all of a sudden, you walk out. I'll see you next Sunday. That's, that's exactly how we live. You know what this world needs? It needs to show this world that Jesus is out of the box. There's no lid on the churches. Listen to me. I'm just telling you, that's how some of us live. That's how some of you live. It's right here. You live, you have allowed Satan to use you like a jack-in-the-box. Like a jack-in-the-box. So listen, God is bigger than the box you put him in. Somebody say amen. amen. God is bigger than the box you have put him in. Lord, I make statements like this. By December 27th, we can be out of debt. And I, you should see the hell. Well, Brian, I'll tell you, boy, don't be giving people false hope. I'm not. I, I just read a different book than you read. I serve a different God than some of y'all serve. Because God said, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I own the hills. I own the gold under the hills. I own it all. And why would not God bless his people? Quit treating God like he lives in a box. Hallelujah. God is bigger. Listen to me. I'm trying to help y'all. God is bigger than drugs. You know what I hear from a lot of people? I'm an addict. If I, listen to me, I'm going to break that curse off your life right now in Jesus' name. If you're born again, and if you're saved, and you have been, you have been delivered by the Jesus Christ, quit giving the devil credit. Why don't you say, you know what, I used to do some crazy things in my life, but God come into my life, he saved me, he spared me, he delivered me, and I used to drink, but now I'm drinking from a different well. Now I'm drinking from the... Come on, somebody. You ain't what you used to be. Travis Gibbon, you ain't what you used to be. Quit acting like a jack in the box. Quit putting Jesus in a box. Because Elkhorn, I'm prophesying over you. I'm going to prophesy over your life. This church will see greater things we will see blinded eyes. Y'all, like, listen to me. Oh, Brian, I just don't. You have God in a box. Well, I don't believe in all that hoorah and hoorah. Okay, when you go to hell, you will be crying then. I guarantee the people in hell are not sitting there going, boy, don't this feel good? Somebody in hell would change spots with you right now. And you are, you have allowed. I have, I have, I have, I have. I have allowed the enemy to lie, 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 lie. And now, I know he can, but here's what I used to say. Will he do it? Why don't you turn your prayer life and say, God, I don't understand what you're doing in my life right now. But God, I believe in you. And I'm going to pray. Like it's already been done, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe that racism will not be in South Central Camp, Camp Gamblesville. That churches will come together as one. The enemy has a lot of us in a box. You don't pray like you used to pray. You don't worship like you used to worship. God is not afraid of porn. God is not afraid of alcohol and drugs. God wants out of your religious box. He wants to get into your heart and he wants to go home with you. Friday, I wrote this down. I write this down. You ought to see my post-it notes in my office. Words that God has given me. And I, I wouldn't sell them for anything. But Friday at 1034, everybody say 1034. Listen to this. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. I'm breaking the power of the box off your life today. And I'm taking the lid off. I'm breaking the power of the box off your life today. And I'm taking the lid off. <laughs> I'm breaking the power of the box off your life today. And I'm taking the lid off. I'm breaking the power of the box off your life today. And I'm taking the lid off. I'm breaking the power of the box off your life today. And I'm taking the lid off. Somebody, please give God a big old prayer. Whether you feel it or not, don't be like this. Don't be like this. Give God a big old shout in here today. Don't be a jack in a box. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's raise a hallelujah in here today. This ain't no game. This ain't no fake in here today. God meant something to me. Y'all just remain standing. Whew, hallelujah. Y'all remember box. Everybody say box. Y'all, settle down, preacher. Only one time in the Bible. Willie, only one, Chris, only one time in the Bible. God mentions box in the New Testament. Y'all remember the, the lady with the alabaster Y'all know the story behind her life? Some of us have misquoted the Bible for so long, we have believed it now. Listen to this. The Bible does not say she poured oil on his feet. The King James, listen, the Bible says she broke the box of oil. He's so good. At the feet of of Jesus she broke the box at the feet of Jesus Let, can, I, can I go deep with y'all just for a moment can I, can I teach you just for a moment before we, before we get out of here today what she done, what she did that perfume she was a prostitute look at me she sold her body she was a and Brian, I just don't like preaching like this maybe that's why you don't read the Bible, I don't know she was a prostitute. She sold her body to men. She would go to the marketplace. Look, look, at, look at me. This is so good right here. Let me teach y'all. She would go to the marketplace, going to sell her body. She was a prostitute, so she would put expensive perfume on so somebody would know she just married, just walked in the house. The Bible says that she should have sold that perfume. She'd got a year's worth of wages. It was expensive. I know what I pay for Chanel. <laughs> you too, don't screw it. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, boo. Hey. So here's why she. Here's why. When she went to Jesus, she said, There's a curse in my life. What I worship is in a box. Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't getting this. What, what, what I pay, how I pay my bills is in this box. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. What I worship 
It's some expensive perfume I put on my body to sell my body, to give my body away. But now, Jesus, what held me back, I'm breaking. What I used to sell my life for, I'm breaking it off my life. Y'all ain't hearing a word I'm preaching here today. I've had you in a box, and now I've got to break it at your feet. She broke the curse off her life by breaking what had a hold on her life. The lesson, everybody say the lesson. (laughs) Here's the lesson. Whatever has you bottled up, whatever has you in a box, there's one way. Look, I wish I was a big theologian and scholar that could get up here and give you three points in a benediction and you go home and boom, you're fixed. There's one way. And I'm so glad God made it like this because youth group, BRAF is not all that. How many of y'all want to break the curse off your life today? Quit, quit, quit being a joke. Listen, some of you have racism in your life. Let's break it. Let's quit playing church. Let's quit having a little Jesus in a little box. It, it, watch this. Here's what I noticed. When Jesus shows up, the first thing that shows up along with him is fear on the people. Yeah. When God shows up and delivers a demon-possessed person, the religious people are sitting there going, Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. So Jesus said, if you want the curse of the box, I put that, the curse of the box off your life. If you want to break the limits, hallelujah, off your life. If you want to break that whole stinking curse of religion off your life. You know how you break the curse? There's only one way. You got to confront it. And it's got to break you. Oh, yeah. But watch what it does. Every time a true breaking happens, it drives you to the feet of Jesus. There's been a lot of people that would walk the aisle, say a prayer, and walk out, and hell still happened. Hell still happened. Hell, you know why? Because there was really not a true breaking. Sometimes God will break you to fix you. It's exactly what Mary had to do. She had to take the most Listen, the most expensive thing in her life, she broke it at the feet of Jesus. She said, God, no more. You're out of the box today. (laughs) God, you're in my life today. So if that's what you want, you got to break what has been holding you back. you got to fall at the feet of Jesus and worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. So here's what I wrote in my own notes. And we're going to go into invitation. Friday in my office, I love my study time. I get away from the church. I go to my house. I shut the door. And I stay in there for hours. Hours. I shut my phone off. So if you call me on Friday, you're not going to reach me, Ralph. For hours. 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 And here's what God says. I heard this in my office. And I know what I had to break. At his feet. Because some of you have unforgiveness in your heart. You need to break it. Some of you have tradition in your life. You need to break it. Some of you think more about the Republican and the Democrat party. And you're really mad today because I mentioned those parties. You can't put God in a Democrat and Republican party. He's God. You can't put God as a Baptist. You know why? Listen, God just spoke. You know why people, y'all got to bear with me because when God speaks, I deliver. You know why people try to put God in a denominational name? It's going to help somebody. Because they control him. Well, listen. Just because we've got Elkhorn Baptist Church out there on the, on the sign, it don't bother me one bit. It don't bother me one bit because I know who I am. I know, <laughs> I know who my daddy is. And he delivers. And so listen to me. You know why they try to make them denominations and Democrat and Republican? Because you start, hallelujah. You start putting your faith in a party. In a man. In a government. Then you do the man, God. 
So I know I'm going to get some heat over this. It's okay. Because you can't prove me wrong in the Bible. And then, never mind. Here's what God said. I hear the crushing of boxes. I hear the crushing of boxes. I hear the breaking of the oil in Jesus' name. And what if I told you today, listen to me, here it is. There are no limits on you. No limits. No limits. He, watch, he ain't in there. He's in here. In Jesus' name, watch me, youth group. There are no limits on you girls and guys. There's no limits on this youth group. Y'all go for it. There are signs. There are wonders. There are miracles. So which one of y'all got baptized in the Holy Ghost up here at this altar? Tell her it ain't real. Look at it. Yeah, I got it, preacher. Yeah, I got it. I got mine August the 8th, 2010. Changed my life. Can I be honest with y'all? Before that, I had him right here. Had him right here. You know why some of you don't want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Because he'll have control of you. <laughs> I'm going to close it out, Greg. You ready, man? It's hot. There's no limits on you. I want everybody to say this. There's no limits on me. Come on. There's no limits on me. But you got to take the lid off. And when you take the lid off, There's got to be a threshing door in your life. So, Father God, I deliver what you told me to deliver. Deal with your people. Deal with me, God. I pray today, God, we will break whatever's holding us back. The most expensive thing in our life. The most expensive thing in our life, God. We would break it at your feet today. And God, I praise you and thank you for a church that loves preaching, that loves worship, that loves the Word of God. I thank you for these precious people. So Lord, Holy Spirit, right now, do your thing. Guide this church. Use this church. God, we receive the abundance. And God, I hear rain. <laughs> I hear boxes crushing this morning. I agree with you. God, I smell oil in the atmosphere. Have your way. And I pray this prayer believing that today somebody's going to get born again. Somebody's going to get set free. Somebody, somebody's coming out of the box. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Y'all done beautiful today. This altar's open. Let, listen, let God love on you. You know why some people leave? They got him in a box. I'm hitting everything today. I might as well, if I'm already preaching on it, I might as well go ahead and hit it all. Why don't you stay? Let him out of the box. Take the lid off. And say, God, here I am. Watch this. This is what God just told me. Why don't you give God the most expensive thing in your life? Brian, he's got it all. But. 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 So I'm done. This altar's open. If you need Jesus, if you need to be delivered, break the oil. Come out of that box today. Take the lid off. Let God just come completely into your life. Give Him all you got. Amen. Give God. What if God told you, I want the most expensive thing in your life? I want the most valuable thing in your life. See, Jennifer, then it changes the ball game, don't it? Mary had to do that. Right. The picture that I see every time I think about that story is when she broke that alabaster box of nard. It filled the, the room full of worship. It was undeniable. Anywhere in that room you were, you couldn't escape it. Couldn't escape it, yeah. The worship was in the atmosphere. But it took a breaking. Y'all want to see God work? Let Him break you. Let Him break you. Because when He breaks you, whatever was in the box is going to come out. It's going to fill the atmosphere. Let God out of the box so He can fill the atmosphere.
And I'm telling you, great things are going to happen. Y'all with me? Stay, I'm with you. All right, this altar's open. We're going to see how much you're with me. Father God, have your way. Bless your people. Feel this atmosphere, God. May the oil of heaven, God, saturate us. God, we take the lid off. Come out of the box.